You want to know the history of drag racing? Man, unless you're a historian or you don't mind spending hundreds of hours in the library researching things, which several of my friends had, it's a little bit spotty. One of the issues is without direct first person corroborated accounts or a publication that got it right back then, it's tough to fill in the blanks. And back then there weren't many publications specifically devoted to covering drag racing. So where does drag racing come from? There's great evidence to suggest that they had organized drag racing in 1903 on Ormond Beach in Florida. Now, if I asked when did successful drag racing start, uh, remember back then, Southern California thought it was the only place on earth and it was a hotbed for hot rodders that morphed into drag racing. But a lot of people would probably say summer of 1950, Santa Ana races at the Orange County Airport. Except for up the street near Santa Barbara, there was a strip in Goleta that started in late 48, ran in 49, and, and they ran organized drag races. Let's call Santa Ana the first commercially successful drag strip. I, I'd go with that. So if you live back east, how would you find out where they were racing or who was racing? About the only way you were gonna get any reliable coverage back then would have been reading Hot Rod Magazine. But remember, it was monthly and there's no way it could devote itself to all the drag racing that was going on. In the early 1950s, there were drag strips all over the country and there wasn't an organized sanctioning body for conducting these. NHRA wasn't the first drag race sanctioning body. Now they predate the AHRA by several years, they predate the IHRA by decades, but they weren't the first ones to do this. In fact, when the NHRA was formed, it wasn't formed for the express purpose of conducting drag races. Let me back up for a second. There's a letter to the editor in the March 1951 issue of Hot Rod, and when have you ever seen a major publication devote a full page of small print to let a fan write a detailed letter in? And basically what this fan, the gentleman's name is Bob Cameron Jr. from Chicago, Illinois, is asking the magazine, why not a National Hot Rod Association? And this gentleman goes on to extol all the positive virtues of having an NHRA. Come to find out later, that gentleman was actually Wally Parks, who wrote that letter to the editor, which in essence means he wrote a letter to himself. He was the editor of Hot Rod Magazine back in that day. So two months later, lo and behold, based on advice from his fans, the National Hot Rod Association was formed with Wally Parks as the president. Now, is that devious or is that brilliant? I think it's a little bit of both, but it was highly effective. So the NHRA was formed. And if you read everything in this initial article about the purpose of the NHRA, remember, it was the National Hot Rod Association. One small facet of it was to conduct drag race events. But remember, in 1951, NHRA hadn't even thought about putting on a drag racing event at this point. They were also concerned with rod runs where hot rodders would gather together and go on a cruise. They were concerned with positive exposure for these young folks that were getting a bad image out there speeding on the street. They were concerned with putting on hot rod shows and events. And they were concerned with a lot of other things surrounding cars driven on the street hadn't quite morphed to the NHRA being devoted to conducting drag races across the country. So I'm gonna take you guys on a trip through history. I have got a lot of publications here. And in fact, it really wasn't until the mid and later 50s that we started getting reliable, consistent, thorough coverage of the drag races that were going on across the country. I'm gonna show you guys how we went from 1953 and seeing a picture on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine of the nitro-powered Bean Bandits, you could call it a D-Roadster, it's kind of the precursor of a dragster, to coming up to National Dragster with a huge publication devoted solely to drag racing. This one is from 1991 and there's a gentleman named John Force on the cover of that. This is gonna be an interesting ride. Stick with me and stay tuned.